What's up, everybody? Welcome into another edition of Bets and Ball Games. Jay has dubbed this the Diego Pavia edition of Bets and Ball Games, brought to you by Bet Online and my perfect franchise. .net. We're recording on Thursday afternoon at noon Eastern, and let's tell you about our friends at Bet Online, the world's most trusted betting platform, and your number one source for everything football. Bet Online has every stat, every matchup, and even live odds and spreads to bet on during the games. Think you know your stuff? Get in on our $200,000 mega contest and pick five games against the spread every week for your chance at weekly prizes and a share of 200 large when the game's over head on over to our online casino and get on a game of blackjack or poker or unwind with one of our over 150 slot games head to the website today to get in on the action bet online the game starts here what's happening jay too much stuff is happening it, i mean it's everywhere it's everywhere it's everywhere tonight on its on its own we've got We've got college football, and, a, and, a, and I got a pick for tonight. We've got Seahawks and hosting 49ers in a game that means a great deal in the NFC West. We've got WNBA finals. You may not care, but some people do. We've got meaningful Major League Baseball playoff games. NHL is in action. I mean, this is – it's an avalanche of things. But my first question has to be – my first of two questions. One – and I don't want you to answer until I get done and give you a pause. Is Diego Pavia an NFL player? Two, I noticed you did your glasses push up from both sides of the frame. Is that a regular thing for you? Oh, you've got the version of the Navin R. Johnson from the jerk where he the optograb and uh, the guy uh, in, in, the, in the gas station goes, damn these glasses. And he goes, I damn thee. So if, if, if you can if you can work some Navin R. Johnson references into every show, you know what? Theme show. I'm gonna come up with a Navin R. Johnson quote from the jerk throughout this for the rest of the day. Deal? Deal. Is Diego Pavi an NFL player? I have no idea. I hope so. Is well, I mean Baker Mayfield is. I mean, if you talk about size. I don't know, because here's the next thing I think Dacre, uh, Diego Pavia should look at. In 2028 in L.A., flag football is an Olympic sport. Ah. That dude playing quarterback for the Team USA or, I mean, I don't know. I mean, is he even eligible for Team USA? I mean, but that dude on in Olympic flag football – Levels all bets. Hey, I, I retweeted his tweet. He goes, hey, for those, he tweeted, for those uh, inquiring about NIL, hit my agent up. <laughs> Why would you not at this point? A million percent, absolutely. And, I mean, there have got to be a whole lot of millionaires who went to Vandy who have been so euphoric over the last <laughs> handful of days have to be. Hey, uh, Jonathan Covington the fourth. Uh, you are my CPA. Can we wire Diego Pavia ten thousand dollars? Because I've enjoyed this this much, uh, <laughs> being able to walk into the country club and look at all my Alabama friends and say, "Everybody, go bleep yourself." <laughs> I love it. Rough day for the tide. Rough, rough day for the tide. All right, let's start with the good, the bad, and the ugly. And uh, you go ahead with your good. Uh, well, I think my good has to be, well, and I know what your good's going to be, so I'll give you that, that spotlight. In the shadows, Sam Pittman got the biggest win of his career in Arkansas – as we've all talked about, Bobby Petrino standing over here to your right, you found ways to lose games in a schedule that was sneaky hard considering they have not played. This is Was this their first or only their second game through six weeks actually on campus when they played Tennessee? Because it's been like a roller coaster of neutral site games, 
go to Little Rock to play UAB. It was their third. Okay. No, no they didn't play Little UAB in Little Rock. Okay. Well, it's been it's been a hot minute since they've been back on campus, and they delivered, and they delivered emphatically. So, uh, and they can beat, already, and they can beat. They could beat LSU coming off the open date too. Remember, that's, they could. that's a game we talked about over the summer when we did our season win totals with Arkansas and LSU. And I said that was a very dangerous spot for LSU because LSU it'll be, is going to be coming off of Ole Miss and Arkansas is going to be coming off the open date. I'm sorry, I interrupted you. Go ahead. No, let's go ahead. What what is your go ahead and go ahead and follow okay. up your good. Yeah, my good is Vandy and Diego Pavia. They out first downed. Uh, Alabama 26 to 17. They had more rushing yards, 166 to 84. Um, Vandy did not get sacked. They did not get sacked. They didn't go three and out. Did I read that stat right? They did not go three and out. They only, I mean, they only punted twice. Hey, hey. I mean, it was a it was an epic upset that we all couldn't believe the score. But if you watch the game, the better team Saturday won. They look better from play number one. Time of possession, 4208 to 1752. Diego Pavia, 16 of 20, 252 passing yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions, 57 rushing yards on 19 attempts. And hey, I got a shout out. The OC who came from New Mexico State, Tim Beck, with Jerry Kill, with Diego Pavia, with Eli Stowers, the tight end who's balling out. Uh, how about that shuttle pass play that worked like three times that they had not put on film all year long? Wow. That play was money. Money. Complete and total money. Yeah. Uh, Clark Lee made a career saving and career-defining decision when he try, decided he's going to go out to Las Cruces, New Mexico and try to talk Jerry Kill into no longer being a head coach and to be his, like, top assistant. And, hey, bring this OC and bring that bring that quarterback who's, 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 uh, who lives rent-free in Hugh Freeze's head. Well, I'll tell you this, and speaking of that, in the Diego Pavia conversation, how many teams around the SEC are looking up and going – how the hell did Vandy get this guy in an NIL portal era and we didn't go get him? We didn't go get him. Like I mean, Hugh Freeze, of all people, of all people, Hugh Freeze. Well, it, it, it's, it's a staggering thing. My ugly, what the hell was that, Eli Drinkwitz? I mean, damn. Show up to College Station and you, I'll go you one ugly, one – 1B, I hope Jimbo Fisher doesn't get on a whole lot of shows because Mike Elko is doing a hell of a lot more down there with an inferior roster compared to what Jimbo uh, wet his pants with a year ago, uh, considering Portal and all the other things. Uh, the, the Aggies are going to be a tough out, brother. Yeah. They look especially really good. There, especially there. And look, they got the open date, and then they are in Starkville, which where they will win, win easily. And then they will be two, three, four. They will be on a six-game winning streak, uh, hosting LSU, which I which win. goes Ole Miss, Arkansas, then that. Yeah, and I would definitely lean A and M in that game. Well, Me we'll see what, see what LSU's got this week. Uh, but then they have to go at South Carolina when South Carolina's got two weeks to prepare. We'll, you know, we'll, we'll see on South Carolina that. Yeah, we'll talk about that more in a minute. Then they got open date, New Mexico State, then at Auburn, and then the rivalry renewed with Texas. A&M has a chance to have a monster year. They're still, still in the mix. They're still in the mix for everything. Everything. Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. What's your so, ugly? Oh, um, oh, gosh. My ugly oh, is Malachi. You're bad. You're bad. You're bad. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. Um, my bad is going to be Shane Beamer's fake punt call in the uh, beginning of the game in the first quarter. First off, and I, I should look this stat up before I say it. 
Um, but I don't have time. I don't like doing that when we're live on the air. But Kai Kroger, his punter, if I'm not mistaken, is like seven of seven in his career passing the ball in fake punts. And I think it's for like three touchdowns. Like, I think he played quarterback in high school. Like, when they run fake punts, they always get them because this punter's got a, oh, he's got an arm. They he's run that. Hose. And yeah, he throws the ball yeah. well. Yeah, there you go. And um, they just run that garbage fake punt that did not work, and and then the game was over. It seemed seemingly like that. And now he is twenty three and twenty overall in year four. And now he's got to go to Tuscaloosa and Norman, Oklahoma, in back to back weeks. And then when he comes off the open date, he's got A and M. Then he got to go at Vanderbilt. Then he's got Missouri at home. And we both liked under five and a half uh, when we did our season win total show in the summer on South Carolina. And I think I think we're looking pretty good on that. They looked awful offensively. Now, maybe Sellers – I just don't know that Sellers was really 100%. Um, but I don't know if going to Tuscaloosa to face a mad Alabama team is going to get him any healthier. We'll find out. But, yeah, that's just a bad, bad performance by South Carolina. And uh, there we go. Uh, as for my ugly, uh, I could, I could, and we discussed in the green room about potentially how lackluster, enthusiastically Hugh Freeze approached that trip to Georgia. They look like they slow walked a whole lot of things, but I'm going to go the final play of the game for Nico Amaliava, who we have praised on this show multiple times. How in the name of Red Grange? And Roger Stallback, do you run out of bounds on the last play of the game and not throw it in the end zone down six on the road? You can't you can't run out of bounds there. You I mean throw it you, up. I don't care if you're a freshman, I don't care if you're a seven-year-old, you just gotta turn it loose. And to even coin the phrase, nobody was open. Who gives a damn? Right? You gotta, I mean. Okay, run the ball for four yards, and maybe you don't throw an interception. I mean, are there NIL bonuses or or fees for interceptions? I don't know, but you can't you can't make that play. Period. The whole drive was inexcusable, and I'm going to point. I mean, yeah, you're a million percent correct on everything, Nico. There, but what in the hell is Josh Heupel doing? Is he doing his Les Miles impersonation? What? Or, or or Oscar Mayer liar circa 07 at LSU when he you just go leave a timeout in your pocket? Oh wait, never mind. You used it before fourth and goal with five seconds left when you could have used it to save twenty seconds. Two different instances in that drive, you could have had twenty more. It would have been five seconds left on the clock before that play if you used a timeout when you were supposed to. There'd have been twenty five seconds left. Well, it like, goes what, back to it, it goes back. What are you to doing, theory. Josh? I it goes back to our theory that every college, every major college, and every NFL coaching staff needs a Madden gamer to be the authority on clock management. Period. End of conversation. Any of us who have played all of, and I know people are going, "Shut up, fat face." I get it. I get it. I'm good. Yes, I've got a fat face, and I do probably need to shut up. But if these guys are, they're not paying attention because it, it's just obvious on when you go and don't even get me started on guys who are down two scores who don't kick the field goal from 45 yards out with a minute 40 left as opposed to still trying to drive to score a touchdown. With all the clock, yeah, yeah, and 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 it's got now twenty seconds left, and you think you can get the onside kick and and then kick a ninety-seven yard field goal? I mean, trust me here, trust me. Yeah, these coaches are getting worse. It's at every level, and it might be the it might be worse. they're cowards. They're scared. It, they it are scared be. of being second guessed, and they demand courage from their players on a daily basis guys who are risking their lives, but they don't want to make the decisions that now are not only analytically correct, they're obvious by every measure. And you know why they don't? Because they don't want to say, coach, why'd you go for it on fourth and four from your own 40? Because nobody wants to stand up and say possession of the ball 
is more important than position on the field in the modern day football at the highest levels. And that's just, it's a simple conversation and I'm looking forward to when everybody else understands it. All right. My ugly is Malachi Moore, two time safety senior uh, for I mean, I, I, no, no, two time captain, not two time safety. My apologies. Uh, so he is a safety, but he's a two time captain is what I meant to say. Um, he had uh, 60 minutes of, of regulation or, or, you know, time on the clock or, or to say differently, four hours on a football field in Nashville to hit Diego Pavia. He had all that time to hit Diego. Pavia wasn't shying away from him. He was throwing it. He was running it. He was doing it all. And the game ceiling first down, he gets that on you, and you decide you're going to take the biggest Bush League cheap shot that I've ever seen, and you do that, and then – then you just continue to show your ass. You go kick the football like a crying, whining little third grader. Then you start berating all of your teammates. And then when DeBoer sends you the, the hook, he sends the sub in to get you, you wave the sub out and you wave DeBoer off. And here I love Kalen DeBoer, and I know you're not that high on him, and – and I, but he lost a lot of points with me. How in the hell Malachi Moore is not suspended for the next game is unconscionable to me. You cannot behave like that. And, and he can stick his apology wherever he wants. Of course, you're apologizing. You acted like a damn fool. And look, you're going to have to answer for it at the NFL Combine. So have fun with that. And shame on you, DeBoer, for not suspending him. Well, and before we get into what is good, what is another crazy slate of games along those lines, because you said apology and it made me think, did you see the social media clip of Tennessee defensive lineman Omari Thomas, Omari Thomas shoving the Arkansas fan so hard that it knocked him and somebody behind him to the ground when Arkansas stormed the field? He apologized and I get that, but this is an interesting conversation because these are two wrongs that make right. it wrong. Yeah, I'm about if to defend you that come player. On the field, You're don't be fair game. To somebody who's pissed off. You who damn right. A football game. Uh uh-uh. uh. They're gonna put hands on you. You damn and, right. I mean, don't get me wrong. Omari Thomas apologized quickly Sunday morning, and I accept that. I do. Hundred percent. And and I understand the emotions of this because we're still talking about a 21 year old dude. Now, should he should he kept his hands to himself? Of course he should. But you storm the field, you yeah. storm the court. All bets are off. Hey, you're getting in. You're you're walking into those people's office, and that's hey. where they do work. Hey, when I when I walk into that Gulf of Mexico, I know what I'm doing. I'm running out there where the sharks are. And if I get bit, that's on me. Period. In the story, you run out on the field, and all bets are off, and. uh and especially if you're showing your ass and, and trying to make fun of the opponent, uh-uh, uh-uh. You can't, you it can't. also was a stark reminder, if you go look it up on the interwebs, those dudes are big and strong. I mean, he, he went, <laughs> and that yeah. guy went, yeah. Right, right, right. <laughs> all right, all right. Okay, let's get to some weak Seven. All right. Before we do that, let me update you on the odds to win the SEC championship game at Bet Online, and maybe there'll be a number that appeals uh, to either of us or any of you in the audience. So Texas is the plus one twenty five chalk, meaning risk one hundred to win one hundred twenty five. Georgia plus four hundred or four to one, and they share the next shortest odds with Bama who uh, also at four to one a and M plus five seventy five, Ole Miss 10 to one Tennessee, 14 to one LSU, 22 to one Arkansas, 40 to one Mizzou, 66 to one Oklahoma, a hundred to one and the rest of the field, 500 to one. All right. Um, let's start with South Carolina at Alabama uh, noon Eastern and our good friends at Bet Online currently have this game at 
Alabama minus 21 with a total of 50 and one half and South Carolina plus 1100 or 11 to one on the money line. I walked out of my house without my notebook, so I don't have my numbers of what I how I lined uh, these games. I'm pretty sure I made Bama 21 and a half. Uh, your thoughts? Well, my my only play on this game would be Bama in the first half, which is 12-ish from what I look from our Thir- friends at Bet Online. 13, I'm seeing at Bet Online now, the total of 27. The uh, the only thing that South Carolina has that has allowed them to stay in games is a dynamite pass rush. Jalen Milrow is the SEC quarterback best equipped to negate that. And I think Bama comes out ferociously. Uh, they've got to be so sick to their stomach about – going to Nashville and getting pushed around. So my play here is Bama in the first half. Uh, you can shop around and find numbers lower than 13, but if that's what Bet Online has, then that's what we're going to use. But I still like it, Bama in the first half, by more than two touchdowns. Yeah, um, I think South Carolina has got to create turnovers to stay in the game. And Milrow has been really good about not turning the ball over. Um, Yeah, I I think it's Alabama or pass. I have not seen a a team total on Bama. But uh, at the same time, I got a lot of respect for South Carolina's defense. So I don't know that I want to. I I think I'm just better off um, just passing on this one. So, uh Let's call me a pass. Oh, let me uh, get you updated on uh, the injury availability report that became, uh, which becomes available every week, Wednesday night at 8 o'clock on the SEC uh, website. So, uh, looks like not a not a whole lot. Um, I'm not seeing any huge names on it, really, uh, either way. So, uh, now, Kobe Prentice is questionable, the receiver uh, for Bama. Uh, but that's uh, that's about it um, in terms of big names. Okay, uh, next game, let's go um, to Texas and Oklahoma, the Red River rivalry, 3.30 p.m. Eastern uh, on ABC. And right now, Bet Online has Texas at 14.5, uh, but half juice uh, on that, so you could probably buy it to uh, – the key number of 14 probably only have to do minus 115. The total is 50 and one half. And Oklahoma is plus 460 on the money line. And in the first half, uh, the Longhorns are seven and a half with a total of 26 and a half. Your thoughts, Jay? Well, uh, both of our thoughts were pretty accurate over the summer when this game opened at like seven and a half or eight. Cause I would, I mean, I think we both would walk naked through traffic to get Texas minus seven or eight at this juncture, especially with a freshman quarterback starting for Oklahoma. Um, I don't like this number in a rivalry game. I really don't. Um, I mean, I know people look to us for anal- uh, for analysis, and if this is a game you got to play, if Quinn Ewers is getting the start, I lay the number. If he's not, I mean, Texas, last time out, I know they're coming off a bye, and I know they may have been a little disinterested, but that was lackluster the last time we saw them against Mississippi State, you know? Absolutely, it was. They uh, did not look good at all. It's a one possession game very late in the first half. So, it this is a Texas or pass for me, but this is almost considering the some other games on the board in the SEC that I like a lot more than this, uh, and some other games nationally that I know we'll get to at the end. This is this is actually a pass or a pass for me. 
Okay, so I, I was hoping Oklahoma was going to get some receivers back this week, and, and I was going to like Oklahoma. Uh, the all the of the five top receivers uh, that have been out, four of them are out again now. Deion Burks has got a chance; he's questionable. If he were to get upgraded, I might consider Oklahoma. I, I would love for it to creep up to 15 or 16 and you know obviously we're recording Thursday so we have no idea if that will happen so we've got more than 48 hours for the market to potentially shift I'll just note that Venables um, he's only been a double digit dog once at OU that was against the semis in the Cheez-It Bowl and Oklahoma could have won that outright. They led for big chunks of that game they ended up losing 35 to 32 but it was an easy spread cover and I was on the Sooners that night, and um, you, bet against, you bet against the the Seminoles. The Sims, every chance you get, pretty much, you know. Sometimes, <laughs> yes, indeed, uh, it happens. It definitely happens. Um, now, uh, in terms of the total, I was just going to point out that the under is uh, three and two overall uh, for Oklahoma. Um, and for Texas, uh, we have got – come on, computer. We've got the over is three and two overall for them. All right, let's go Mississippi State at Georgia, 4, 5, excuse me, 4.15 p.m. Eastern SEC Network. And looking for the line here. And we've got Bet Online showing Georgia minus 34 total – of 54 and a half and the first half line well, what is that 44 10 is what they're expecting uh georgia minus 21 in the first half so here let me go back i'm sorry i was uh okay so 34 and 54 yeah 44 to 10 expectancy there um now for georgia they lose another uh receiver uh, this week, as uh, Colby Young is now out after his arrest, suspended indefinitely, and uh, Jay's guy with the mullet that he admires, Tate Ratledge, second-team All-American last year, he remains out. So does Smile Munden. Uh, so, um, you know, Georgia's dealing with with, uh, with that. And who does Georgia have next week? Oh, is that the look-ahead game to Texas? So, Vintage look ahead spot, Mississippi State cash tickets at Texas. Um, but I'm not interested. I'll pass. I'm not, I'm, no, I can't trust Mississippi State, but there's no, no way I'm playing Georgia at 34. No, no way. No way. Okay. This that was is very a pass good. or pass game for me. Yeah, pass or pass. Yep. So sorry, uh, we don't have much analysis there. All right, let's well, go. I mean, with all the people on the sideline and <laughs> I mean, it's look ahead. Texas it is. is on deck. It's, complete, it's a complete void game that you just came off the rivalry game with Auburn. And I know George is better than Auburn. It's still a rivalry game. And now you get Mississippi State at home. Was Mississippi State off last week? Yep. Man. Yeah, it's, a, it's a vintage spot for Mississippi State. It's almost like, you know, maybe you consider them. If this 34. was the old, J, old school JP Nooner. This would be the classic. It's 21-19 with Georgia having to make a defensive stand late. You know what? Oh, man. Yeah, our JP Nooners did not disappoint very often uh, way back in the day. Um, all right, let's go to Florida at Tennessee at what I call the Swamp North because when you've dealt out as many pep slaps in that building as I have, you just get to use whatever name you want. So that's the name I use. Florida, 17 and 2 straight up, 14 and 5 against the spread in the last 19 head to head meetings between these teams. Uh, Eugene Wilson is back for the Gators, as is Aiden, uh, Aiden Mizell. And uh, maybe there's a chance that Joey Slackman uh, could get back. Four star transfer from Penn. He's been out since uh, week two. He's questionable. Uh, but the Gators, uh, you know, back-to-back -back wins, maybe feeling a little better about themselves. Billy Napier as a double-digit underdog at Florida is 4-2 and two against the spread. But overall, in his 13 such spots, as, you know, counting the Louisiana Raging Cajun days, he's 9-3-1 and one ATS 
in 13 games as a double-digit uh, underdog. I'll throw it over to you for some analysis. Actually, let me give out the line. Uh, oh, we've had some movement in the last hour. Looks like Bet Online is down to 14 with a total of 56. This was 15 and a half, two hour, hour and a half, uh, two hours ago. Uh, so now 14 and 56. Now there's still a lot of 14 and a halfs out there. But if you want to bet Tennessee, you need to go to bet online right now because that that seems to be the only 14 on the board. I'm going to throw it over to you and I'm going to go look up the last time Tennessee beat Florida by more than 14. And I might have to do some looking. So don't be afraid to do some, some long winded so um, filibuster. Is what yeah, I'm fil- filibuster your way through this because I might be looking for a long time here. Ladies and gentlemen, pull up chairs and let us, as we congregate here in the religion that is college football, I feel somewhere that Steve Spurrier's got a smile on his face and Philip Fulmer is probably eating a second sausage biscuit, even this late in the morning, at the consternation and frustrations of what has been Tennessee's struggles against Florida for most of our adult lifetimes. I will say this, in terms of this game, Eugene Wilson is a difference maker. He is a difference maker for Florida's offense. He is a difference maker from a Tennessee secondary that was less than impressive against Arkansas. I'll go a step further. The questions about Tennessee's offensive line, which I believed was a strength when I said this team was gonna contend for the playoffs, are fair. And Nico Amaliava being sacked three plus times in each of the last two games has to be of a concern against a Florida team whose defensive strength is getting after the passer. They are athletic because, I mean, hell, they're in the state of Florida. If you can't find a pass rusher in the state of Florida, you can't find a hurricane in October. Brian, I hope you guys are good and safe and all those things. We're good. Everybody's been praying for y'all with Milton coming down there and and doing nasty stuff. But, I mean, I this morning in the 5 of 10, I, I, I do my college picks on Thursday morning. It's called the Fab Four. This morning, I looked at Bet Online, and Florida was catching 16. So it has greatly changed. Now, does that mean uh, Florida's about to announce they've got like seven starters been suspended for goodness knows what? I don't know. Are they – overly concerned about the impacts of the hurricane and how it affected the schedule uh, preparation wise. Again, I don't know, but if I had to set this line after last weekend, it would have been single digits. And by definition, if I can go from nine to 16, I don't see how you can do anything but fully back Florida. Even that's at 14, I, 14 and a half. Yeah, that's where I'm at. I'm on the Gators. Um, I got 15 and a half uh, early in the week. Uh, the last time that Tennessee beat Florida by more than 14, I remember it vividly. I remember where I was. I was in Cape Sandblast, uh, and uh, Tennessee won 31 to 14. Uh, it was a driving rainstorm in the second half. And it really wasn't even that close. It was more of a – and that was when Fulmer, if I'm not mistaken, I, I think that was when he was the interim coach because Johnny Majors um, – had he fallen ill or something? Didn't he like – Yeah. Yeah, yeah he, 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 he had he some health no issues. Problem. Yeah, and I think that beatdown played a big role in, in Fulmer – uh, Majors not being asked to come back and Fulmer taking over. So it's been since 1992, so 32 years – since Tennessee has uh, beaten Florida by more than 14, which is what they'll have to do uh, this week. Uh, I don't have any opinion on the total. Uh, I, I think Tennessee should be able to run the ball very effectively on Florida, but I think Florida can score on Tennessee, uh, uh, you know, enough so to hang in. I think Tennessee wins. They better win. I don't want a three-game winning streak and any donors talking about, oh, let's keep Billy Bob. Let's let's keep Strickland. Hell no. So Tennessee win this game. Just win it by a little bit, though. All right. I'm with you on both of those. Yeah. All right. Uh, moving on now. This one's 
This one's real, real interesting in Red Stick. Saturday night, under the lights, ABC, 7.30 p.m. Eastern. All right, so uh, the most important thing to me in this game is all these injuries uh, for Ole Miss. So Matt Jones, RB2, doubtful. Doesn't sound like uh, he's going to play. I uh, believe Jeremy James is a starter on the O-line. Yes, indeed, he is. He is also doubtful. Um, okay, then we've got Prince, Prince Lee Human Million, who missed the South Carolina game. He is questionable. And then we also have Trey Harris, who has far and away been the best receiver uh, in the SEC this year, one of the best in the country. He is questionable. J.J. Pagese, D-tackle slash short yardage running back, he is questionable. So very important players for Ole Miss that, you know, we're not going to know about for a minute. Uh, Chris Hilton, the wide receiver uh, for LSU, is questionable. But Caden Durham, the freshman running back, has been upgraded to probable. So he's probably going to be good to go. And currently our friends at Bet Online have Ole Miss listed as a three-point favorite at a minus 120 price with a total of 62. But there are plenty of three-and-a-halves out there. It looks like DraftKings and Bet Online are the only spots that are at three with a little extra juice on the Rebels and the money line uh, for LSU at Bet Online is plus 147. Um, what you thinking here? Oh, by the way, over is six and one in the last seven in this series. Average combined scores of 76.9 points per game. Um, I, I like both angles of it. Uh, I like the over and I'm sorry, but I've, we've seen this song and dance too many times. I, I don't know if I ever truly feel comfortable, especially now that Nick Saban's no longer part of this league, of backing any road favorite going to Red Stick at night on a Saturday. I, I'm, I'm just – I've seen this story play out too many times. I've seen way too many uh, Auburn teams that were – noticeably better on paper, go to LSU and get and get punched in the face. You've seen way too many Florida teams have no business losing at night on Saturday in Red Stick. I just – this is – I mean, and you didn't even mention that this is seven games in seven weeks for Kiffin and Ole Miss. I mean, LSU coming off a bye, LSU's got a quarterback that they have done a pretty damn good job of protecting – He's going to sling it around the field, and Ole Miss's defense is at times can be messy. So, I the they need I, Human I, Million I, rushing the quarterback. They need him. That is a big deal, yes. whether he's playing or not. But uh, I'm I'm on LSU here. Give me the points. Uh, I I and I also really believe that having been around football almost all of his life. Brian Kelly has to know how important this game is. Oh, he, he does. has to. Because there's not really a meaningful exclamation point win. I mean, yeah, it was emotional and fun, but they escaped South Carolina. Right. I mean, this was – and your fan base needs you to punch Lane Kiffin in the mouth or LSU becomes in the Lane Kiffin sweepstakes. And here's what LSU has after this game at Arkansas with Arkansas having two weeks to prepare at A&M, Bama at home at Florida, Vandy at home when Diego Pavia has two weeks to prepare. And then Oklahoma. Never bet against Diego Pavia, never bet against Diego Pavia. That's right. So I'm not going to say that this is a pass for me. What I'm going to say is I'm not going to even evaluate this game until I see that Trey Harris – and Princely Human Million are definitively playing or definitively out because they are at least a point and a half, two points less of an offense without Trey Harris. And Human Million's worth a half point probably uh, on the defensive side of the ball. So, I mean, we're talking about like, you know, we're talking about one of the – maybe the second most important player on offense in Harris – and, uh, one, you know, one of the top one, two, or three 
important players on defense. Although Chris Paul has been balling the Arkansas transfer for Ole Miss. So I just, I got to find out who's playing before I have an opinion. Um, so maybe if you want my opinion, be looking at my Twitter on Saturday. All right. We're going to take a quick time out for some, my perfect franchise. Are you an experienced entrepreneur looking to divert to diversify or are you an employee that's simply tired of answering to the man? If so, let me tell you about our guy, Andy Ludicky, and his business, MyPerfectFranchise.net. Like you, Andy had had it with corporate America. He was married with a kid and another on the way. He wanted to start his own business, and he did just that. Now he has multiple businesses, and he can help you get going and doing the same thing. Here's how it works. You go to Andy's website, MyPerfectFranchise.net. You set up an intro call a one-hour consultation, and it's 100% free. Look, guys, Andy is good people. He's looking to help, and he wants to help you. You're going to tell him about your passion, your goal, your skills, your goals, the time and money that you have to invest in this endeavor. Then Andy will figure out for you what sort of business fits your DNA. He'll register you with potential franchises. He'll find the best franchise that suits the vision and corporate culture you want and before you know it you'll be on your way and andy will have you making green backs galore so what are you waiting for reach out to andy at myperfectfranchise.net okay let's go to our nightcap game kroger field lexington kentucky 7 45 p.m eastern sec network bet online currently has Kentucky as a 13 and a half point favorite with a 44 and a half point total. And if you want to back Vandy on the money line at Bet Online, you can get a plus 405 uh, return here. So now when we talk situational spots or, you know, uh, this spot could not set up more perfectly for Kentucky. They are off an open date. They've had two weeks uh, to get healthy and to prepare. And Vandy is literally coming off the biggest win in program history. That just smells like let down galore. But what I said Kentucky's had two weeks to get he healthy. But Maxwell Hairston, their star DB, who was a second team all SEC pick uh, last year, uh, he's going to miss his second. Uh, straight game. But the secondary fared quite well against Ole Miss um, without him. Um, so what say you, Jay, on this? Or let me mention a couple of key injuries for um, Vandy. Uh, starting safety C.J. Taylor is questionable. And Langston uh, Patterson, uh, linebacker and leading tackler last year, uh, he is also questionable. So keep an eye on those two. You mentioned the spot, and that makes me a little – trepidatious but what also makes me a little cautious about this because while it feels like too many points and god knows i'm not betting against diego pavia ever again but vandy doing what it did to alabama was mark stoops biggest favor because he doesn't have to tell them to take he doesn't have to tell anybody in blue to take vanderbilt seriously this week that it Saturday night got everybody's attention who's got a UK on their helmet, whether you are Prince Charles or you are Brock Vandergrift. If you are representing the UK, you are well aware of what Vandy did last Saturday night. So this is a pass for me. I mean, if we're going to, and I know you're going to give your pick, but I've got a couple other non SEC games, but my top two are. LSU at home getting points and Florida going to Knoxville getting more than two touchdowns. All right. So I made Kentucky an eight point favorite. I, I think that the letdown scenario is, is, is cooked into this line and, and left on the grill a little too long. Um, again, I, I just said it's the perfect spot for Kentucky, but um you know, I, and I don't like to bet on teams in bad spots, but I'm just a Diego Pavia believer, and I, I just I, I'm just not buying they're going to lose this game by more than two touchdowns. In fact, I think they have an excellent chance at winning this game outright, and I will be sprinkling some plus 405 money line. But the main play is Kentucky plus 14. 
and obviously buy the half point from 13 and a half to the key number if you need uh, to do so. I will mention that the Commodores have already been double digit underdogs uh, three times this season, and they've gone three and zero against the spread with two outright wins. The only outright loss is a double digit dog at Missouri in overtime uh, game. They, you know, certainly had their chances to win. And Diego, eight touchdown passes, no interceptions, 973 passing yards, team high, 336 rushing yards, and two touchdowns. And I will go with Vandy uh, as a double-digit underdog. And, I, you know, I was, you know, they've been uh, perfect uh, to the over this year, 5-0. and oh, And it's a really low total at 44-and-a-half. But I looked at Kentucky's um, – you know, they've had some low-scoring games. I mean, they had the 25 uh, with Georgia. They had 37 with South Carolina, 31 with Southern Miss, 37 with Ole Miss. So I, I'm not going to mess with the total, uh, just Vandy uh, for me. So non-SEC picks for this week, Jay, what you got? Uh, one, I'm riding Army uh, until they buck me. Uh, Army's laying 25, 26, depending on where you can see it. But Army leads the nation – in rushing, UAB, there are only five teams worse defensively against the run than UAB. Really? Uh, yes. They're allowing 258-plus yards a game uh, running the football. And UAB's quarterback, starting quarterback, is questionable. It's been a difficult transition for Trent Dilfer for his first year, and I get it. With the quarterback running around and making plays, they scared Arkansas. You're not – Army doesn't look by anybody. Army takes every opponent as they come, and this game is on campus in West Point. Uh, this game feels 49-7 to me, all, all up and down and across the board. Like Pitt, <clears throat> Army, 5-0, and both straight up and against the spread, and – you know, Navy is off this week, but they're also 5-0, and 4-1 and ATS. And you know who is enjoying the hell out of Army and Navy's uh, success? Uh, Americans everywhere. <laughs> That's a very solid and educated guess, and it's not wrong. However, I had in mind – the Notre Dame Fighting Irish because their strength of schedule is going up by the day and they get Navy at MetLife in uh, the Meadowlands on October 26th and they get Army in the Bronx at Yankee Stadium November 23rd and guess what? Army has two weeks to prepare. So, we shall see. I brought up Pitt because they are my favorite play of the week. Minus three, I got them. They're three and a half uh, at last, <clears throat> excuse me, last look. Looks like they're three and a half at bet online. I'd buy the half point to three. Alabama transfer QB, Eli Holstein, 65.5 completion percentage, 1,564 passing yards, 15 to 3 TDI and T ratio. He's mobile as well, 265 rushing yards, three touchdown. 5.5 yards per carry average. Uh, they're fourth nationally in total offense. They're sixth in both passing yards and scoring uh, with their 45.6 points per game average. Now, Justin Wilcox, fantastic as an underdog. Another cover last week. But this is Cal's third trip in five weeks into the Eastern time zone. I mean, uh, over 2,000 miles one way each time and probably a lot more than that um and the golden bears are coming off as deflating and an emotional loss as you could possibly have and i don't even think the game ended till like like almost 3 a.m eastern so all that uh, look i would like pit minus three regardless but then you you couple in cal traveling east third time in five weeks and that heartbreaker late night last week pit minus three my biggest bet of the week uh, if I'm going to add two more before we sign off here, uh, I don't think USC can block Penn State this weekend. 
And I don't – and Penn State's going to run the – foot. if USC is going to lose to Minnesota, I don't care where that game's played. I don't care if it's in uh, Minneapolis. I don't care if the game's in L.A. I don't care if it's in Happy Valley. I don't care if it's on Uranus. But I will say this. Penn State is so much bigger and stronger than Minnesota. I think – and I think James Franklin is tired of hearing about how his team has won more games than anybody else in America – but not been to the college football playoff over the last handful of years. I think Penn State punches USC in the face. Penn State in their last 11 games is a road favorite. They are 10 and one against the spread. All right. Uh, my next uh, pick is going to be Cincinnati plus three at UCF. Cincinnati. Uh, could easily be undefeated. They lost by one to Pip. They blew a 27 to 10 lead with less than a minute remaining in the third quarter. And then in the loss, 44 41 at Texas Tech, um, they missed two field goals. And their star quarterback, Brendan Swordsby, who has a 12 to 1 TD INT ratio, he threw his only interception of the season that Texas Tech turn into a pick six, but uh, Sorsby's playing great. Uh, 66.3 completion percentage, 1,481 passing yards. Uh, he also has three rushing uh, touchdowns, and the Knights are 103 nationally in pass defense. And uh, Corey Kiner, he left the Texas Tech game uh, with an injury after three carries and didn't come back. He was cleared. He's good to go. And that was announced on Tuesday. He had over a thousand yards last year. And this year he's got 413 rushing yards, 6.2 yards per carry average. So Cincinnati uh, plus three for me. And uh, I'll, I won't bore you with the stats. I'll just tell you that um, these are the two worst defenses in the country, statistically, Ball State and uh, Kent State. And um, uh, Ball State has been really good offensively, uh, especially playing MAC opponents. I'm going to go over 58 and a half in that game. You want me to keep going on my NFL, or you want to throw it back to you? Do you have a uh, grown man in diapers picks? Nope. Nope. All I right. don't even – they might be One thing me. before you get into your NFL uh, rallying, if Cincinnati delivers this, is Malzahn in trouble down there? Wow, that's a – Huh. Well, still a lot of season to play, but still a lot of season. But now you're going to talk about a three game losing streak and UCF losing to Florida is never going to be a huge black eye. Right. But Colorado coming down there and punching you in the face and then Cincinnati. I mean, well, then you go to Ames after that. Right. And then you got a, a perhaps still undefeated BYU team come into Central Florida. Then you got Arizona at home. You got at ASU. You get two weeks to prepare for Morgantown and then Utah uh, at home. And I, I, I really – I saw the Utah line went down. It makes me think Cam Rising's not playing, and I just hate that for him. But uh, anyway, yeah. All right, share your NFL picks, and let's tell everybody to hustle on and go spend time with their family. There you go. All right, so I'm going with the Red Hot Commanders. By the way, 6-0 and in the NFL this past Sunday with my picks beating the closing line by 76 combined points. I've been on the Commanders four weeks in a row successfully. I'm right back to them. Let's buy the half point from 6.5 to plus 7. And Baltimore uh, has played four one-possession games, two of their wins by only three points. So, And the defense is not very Baltimore – Esque. In fact, they're ranked 31 out of 32 NFL teams in pass defense, number 26 in scoring D. I made Baltimore a four-point favorite. They're six and a half. Let's go Commanders. I made the Broncos a three-point favorite at home to the Chargers, but they're a three-point underdog. Bo Nix, first two weeks, uh, first two games of his career, four interceptions, two losses. Since then, zero turnovers, three wins. Broncos third in the NFL in total defense and scoring defense. And the Chargers, two offense, starting offensive tackles, Rashawn Slater and Joe Alt. They missed the last game. They're questionable this week, and the offense is struggling. Give me Denver uh, plus three. And then let's also go uh, Giants, Bengals over 48. The overs on a 4-0 run, 4-0 run for the Bengals with combined scores of 51, 71, 58, and 79. I've successfully backed the over 
in uh, two straight Cincinnati games. Joe Burrow, 12 to 2 TDI and T ratio on the season. And since T Higgins returned, the Bengals have scored 33, 34, and 38. Fingers crossed that Malik Neighbors will get uh, upgraded. But whether he does or not, Giants last four games. Daniel Jones, 6 to 1 TDI and T ratio. And I'll also say if the Bengals get to three, I'll, I'll be on the Bengals. But my main uh, play there is over 48. All right. For Jay Greason, I'm Brian Edwards. This has been another edition of Bets and Ball Games, sponsored by my perfect franchise and Bet Online. Good luck with your bets. We'll talk to you next week. We're over and out.